I do not play the clarinet at all, but somehow I own two of them. So I'm gonna do what I always do with instruments that I have but don't know how to play, which is most of them. Make them sound weird and then sample them. Hi again, my name is Paul Koch, and recently I created the Swarmatar, a contact instrument based on the Swarmatron featuring e electric guitars. I think it came out great. You can check it out up in this link or down in the description. It's totally free. And today we're gonna make the successor, the Swarmanet. I'm gonna follow the same basic procedure as the Swarmatar, a bunch of layers of the same notes that can spread apart in pitch with a CC control. And again, it's gonna be totally free. Now there are a few key differences between a DI e electric guitar and a clarinet that'll make this process unique. One, I think the attack of the clarinet is really important and it's something that I want to maintain through this instrument. Two, a clarinetist is going to run out of breath at some point while an e can just play a note until the battery dies. And three, neither of these particular clarinets have a quarter inch jack, so we're going to have to record them with a microphone. And in this room especially, a microphone means denoising will be important. And before we go any further, let's just jump to the future and hear what it sounds like. Here it is, the Swarmanet. Uh, it's pretty similar to the Swarmatar if you saw that video. There are 10 clarinets that'll play in unison until you turn this giant swarm knob, and then they'll spread apart in pitch like a Swarmatron does. There are two groupings of five clarinets each. This black grouping is played pretty straight, or at least as straight as I could play it as someone who really sucks at the clarinet. And this white group was a little easier for me. It has a little bit more motion and tone, and little blips and boops and ugliness to the sound. It's got your typical ADSR and low pass filter, and then you can set different ranges for the pitch bend up and down, so that way you don't have to fiddle in between the notes to find the right interval you want. And the vibrato is unique to each clarinet layer, so each one goes at a different speed and a different amount. So let's hear it. Here's the swarm knob in action. Here's the black straighter clarinets by themselves. and the white ones. Here's the vibrato. I like setting the swarm range at either pretty small intervals, like two or even one. You get an effect almost like a detuned synth that way. When you set it to the full octave, it spreads out into a giant diminished chord. So I like to set it to like 11 or 10 or nine so the inner voices never actually find a distinct pitch. So that's it. If you like the Swarmanet, there's a link to download it in the description. It's totally free. I would love if you could subscribe or hit the thumbs up. If you ding the little bell, you'll get a notification the next time I put out one of these videos with a free instrument like this. Uh, there's more coming, there's one on the way. And now let's go back to past Paul who has no idea how this turned out. So, was it cool? So now we're getting into recording. I'm gonna switch it up a little bit from the Swarmatar. So instead of an, a maximum spread of an octave up and an octave down in whole step intervals, I'm gonna do minor thirds. This means I'll need four notes up and four notes down, uh, two notes up and two notes down per clarinet, plus a root, so five layers per clarinet and 10 layers total. I did the last one in Logic, so what the heck, let's do this one in Pro Tools. I made another template for this one, just like I did with Logic, with markers for each note, reflecting the two different clarinets, five layers each, 10 layers total, and I'm gonna record it all in minor thirds, as high as I can go. It looks like each layer will take me about four minutes uh, if I nail it, uh, so about 40 minutes total. Uh, wish me luck. I'll be using this Line Audio CM3 microphone. It's like 150 bucks from Sweden. It's a one-man operation. They sound awesome. I did a little shootout with a few mics and this one came out on top. In terms of my approach, uh, I'm gonna be a little bit different with the black clarinet and the white clarinet. I think the black, I'm just gonna play the notes pretty straight as much as I can, which won't be that straight. And then with the white ones, I'll try to add a little bit of flavor into them. That way you get a different character depending on which clarinet you wanna hear, or you can play both. Bye. 
Okay, this isn't working. It's taking me too long to find the note because I don't know how to play the clarinet. So what I'm going to do is instead of doing going through the whole scale on one clarinet and then moving on, I'm going to do all the Ds and then all the Fs and then all the G sharps. Okay, here we go. harder than I thought it would be. Okay, it's tomorrow. Let's uh, get down to editing. First, let's hear what we got last night. Perfect. That's not going to need any tuning at all. So first things first, I already went through and just adjusted the edit points to make sure that no notes were cut off in the middle. Uh, I'm going to export these as one long file each and denoise them, and then I can tune them and then we'll be ready to go. So I'll select all of these and I'm going to rename them. I'm gonna add Swarmanette to the beginning and I'm gonna trim off the last three characters at the end to lose the numbers. And then we should just have Swarmanette D3, Swarmanette F3, Swarmanette G Sharp 3, uh, and that's the whole file name. So that's good, that'll keep us organized. One thing that's a little annoying about the batch renaming is that they only rename the region inside Pro Tools, but they don't rename the actual file. Um, the quickest way I think to do it is just double click on it. If name clip and disk file is already selected, you can just hit enter and it'll rename the disk file as well. So now we can bring it into RX. First things first, I'll drag in the noise profile. It says nosy, but I meant noise. I'll grab a piece of it that uh, doesn't have any clicks in it. Open up the voice denoise, learn it. I've already done that. And then I can open up the batch processing, drag in the samples, and then add a processing step, which is the voice denoise with these custom settings. And I'm gonna add an NR after the file name to keep them organized. Now, if you're doing this on your own, I encourage you to listen to these samples before you know before you denoise them and make sure that you have the settings right. You're not taking off too much of the high end or too much of the actual sound of the instrument. Right, I've already done that. So just for the interest of time, the batch processing like this is fine. As you can see from this curve, that it actually did for me automatically, but I thought it sounded pretty good. It's taking out a lot more of the low frequencies. The threshold is a lot higher in the lows than it is for the highs. So that really breathiness that's coming out of the clarinet is something that'll remain. But now that everything's processed, uh, we can go into Melodyne and tune everything. That'll be a task. So I've got Melodyne open. I'll bring in all of my noise reduced samples here. As you can see here, I accidentally played a whole layer in a B flat instead of a B because I don't know how to play the clarinet. Luckily, it's a pretty easy fix. I'll do it on the contact end so I'm not unnecessarily tuning it twice. So my first step is to use the pitch tool and I'm just gonna center the pitch on it on all these notes. And then I'll use the pitch drift because you can see here, I go pretty sharp. I can straighten out all these pitches. So they're pretty steady. Um, I don't need a lot of variation on these to be happy. I think there's enough tone variation where we'll be okay. I'll just go through the rest of the samples and do the exact same thing. Oh boy. Okay, now that these are all in shape, I can export them all and just replace the files that are already there. And here's a trick, if there's a menu item for something that doesn't have a key command, if you're using a Mac, you can set that up in system preferences. You open up system preferences, go to keyboard, go to shortcuts. Under app shortcuts, you can add a new one. I'll select Melodyne here, and then for menu title, you just type it in exactly how it shows here. So replace audio, replace audio. And I'll make the shortcut, I don't know, command shift R, how about that? I add that, I close this, and then Command Shift R does it. That'll save you a lot of time for stuff that doesn't have a key command. So now we can bring everything back into Pro Tools and start editing the ins and outs of all the samples. So an easy way to do this is just to take all the audio files in here, select the ones that aren't denoised, 
and then put them into a folder that you can call original and then take the noise reduced ones rename them and taking out the last three digits so that way now they're named the same way as the original files were but you still have yours here in the original folder and then just close and reopen your session and it should reconnect automatically and there we go so now we can listen to them denoised Compare that to what we heard earlier. Much better. We still have a B flat instead of a B uh, for these five. And there's our diminished chord here. Now we'll just go through and edit the ins and outs of all the samples, and then we can bring it into contact. And you notice that none of these are the same length, and that is by design and by the fact that I'm inconsistent. But I, it's on purpose. I don't want the, all the breaths to line up when it's looping. So every, you know, 10 seconds you hear another loop exactly at the same time on all the layers. So now we can export all of these and bring them into contact. The first thing to do will be to rename them all again. So I'll select all the black ones, right click them, batch rename. And then I want to trim three off the end to get rid of these numbers. And then I will insert BLK underscore at index one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Index ten. Now that gives us five regions with the exact same name. So I'm going to go through and take all of these, batch rename these, and replace BLK and make it BLK01. I'll do the same with these. So now that all of these regions are renamed, we can select all of them, export 2448, and they're all in here ready to go into contact, ready to be auto mapped. So that's it for Pro Tools, um, and into contact we go. Okay, now it's time to bring in contact. So what I'm gonna do is start with the Swarmatar as a basis, and I'll end up redoing some of the script. So first I'll save as, so I don't mess up the one that I already have. Call it the swarm and net. Okay, so now I'm free to mess with this as much as I want. So first thing is I'll go in and I'll delete all the samples because we don't need any guitar samples in here. We need 10 groups so I can get rid of all of these and then I'll rename the groups based on how we name the files. Now that we've got all of our groups, I'll drag in all the samples that we just made. I can right click, go to auto map setup, Swarmanet ignore, BLK01 will be the group name, and then B3 set to single key. Apply. Go to batch tools, move the root key to center so all the notes should play the right notes. Then we can start spreading these downwards. So if all just went well, we have a functioning instrument already. It works, but as you can see, this one's going backwards. We have these reverse groups in the Swarmatar, so we can just undo those for the Swarmanet. I'm also gonna move the entire thing down an octave. Then you hear our B flat mistakes. So we'll take all of the black ones. Now we're just gonna make everything loop. And again, because all of the samples are different lengths, we can't do it as a batch function for some reason. So we'll just go through and click, 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 click. Okay, <clears throat> now it should all loop. It's sounding really great. It's already in good shape. We already have all the effects in there that we want. And one thing that I found poking around is it's actually really nice having just this first group playing solo. So I'm gonna have to add that in as a little feature. So that means that mapping is done. We can move right on to the script. 
So here we are back in the script. It looks like we're in the swarm at R, but we're in the swarm in it. So there's just a few changes that we have to make. So the first thing that I want to do here is create a resource container specific to the swarmanet. Right now, the swarmanet is referencing the swarmatar for all of the scripts and for all these knobs and the pictures. And so I want to fix that. So to do that, I go into instrument options, resource container, and instead of swarmatar, I want to create one. I'll navigate to our swarmanet, call it PK swarmanet. It does not have a folder structure. Would you like to create one? Yes, I would. So this is the one from the Swarmatar. This is the one from the Swarmanet. And I'm just gonna copy everything over for right now. Okay, so I know right off the bat, I don't need the Swarmatar background file, which looks like that. But I'm gonna keep this text file because I'll use the exact same one for the Swarmanet's background file. Which looks like this. I gave it a new paint job, but otherwise very similar. Also clarinets instead of guitars. So I'll just name this the same. That should work fine. And then I'm gonna go through and just change all the references to the Swarmatar, change them to the Swarmanet, and then there's a few more things that I'm gonna do in a second. We're in great shape right now. Uh, it sounds great. My one kind of nitpick is that you can't really tell if the white one's on or off. And these faders all but disappear at the end. Uh, the contrast is a little different than with the last one. So I might adjust the colors there a little bit. But other than that, I think we are pretty much good to go. Okay, well, thank you for making it to the end. Again, there's a link to download the Swarmanet in the description. Uh, if you wanna subscribe, I think I'd much appreciate it, but otherwise, more coming soon. And if you have any ideas for other instruments or sounds that you think would swarm well, uh, put it in a comment and, and we'll see about making one. Otherwise, until next time.